Hi, Breeze. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. <laughs> Can you give a recap? I uh, don't know. Where are you from? I'm Bree. I'm 26. I'm from Quaker Town. Okay, okay. Quaker Town in the yep. house. Yep. <laughs> and I'm here and it's cold. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So what you been up to lately? Been back and forth to Pottstown now. Mm -hmm. Getting in some trouble, unfortunately. But I get to go home for Christmas. Right. So That's that great. made me a switch up. And I think I'm going to stop drugs for the New Year, I think. Thank. <laughs> you want to see the kids, right? Yup. That's exactly Christmas? what I'm going to go do. Yup. At least one of them. That's a blessing. That's the best gift you can give them. Yup. It really is. That is. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm excited. So, um, how are you going about that? Did you reach out to somebody? Uh, my family reached out to me on Facebook. That's good. That's good. Yup. So. You still active on Facebook? When I have a phone, yeah. <laughs> you want to give out that information at all or no? Uh, you know, so you know the audience can possibly reach out to you. Uh, Brianna Axelson, A X E L S O N. Okay, guys, you got her uh, information on Facebook in case you wanna help her out. You know, give her some words of encouragement. That'd Something to keep awesome. Brie going. You know, while she's fighting her addiction. Yep. yep. For the New Year's, that's your New Year's resolution plan. Yes, Quit. it is. Right. That is the New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, I get there. Hopefully. <laughs> Anything you want to accomplish after you uh, quit the drugs? Get a place. Get, get a, a place. job. And I want to start going to school again. Right. Those are the necessities you need to, you know. To survive. Yeah. Do you have any of those things now? Uh, no. So how are Still you surviving? Outside. Uh, boosting or tricking, unfortunately. Still doing those things? Yeah. Have to. I know other way to do it. So when was like your last date? Last date was a week ago actually, unfortunately. Um, I haven't been able to really do as much stuff as I wanted to do, but hey. Are you like slowing down on the dating or? I am because is it hard apparently to do? there's a serial killer. So mm -hmm. I've been really careful with what I've been doing. Yeah, I've been hearing that for the past couple months now. There's been a serial killer, right? Or maybe a couple. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of girls being found chopped up and stuff, so it's scary. Yeah. So I've been sticking with my regulars instead of going out there and finding new people. I just kind of waltz around waiting for my regulars to drive by, and hopefully they need me <laughs> to help them out. <laughs> Do you ever, like, um, worry about STDs or... I don't, I don't actually like full blown have sexual intercourse with them. I don't do that because it's a means something to me. It actually means something. So right. it's about connection to me. And since my fiance died, I haven't really been able to do anything. Kind of break down crying since then. So. I can feel your pain. Let's yeah. Say your fiance died. Yeah, in July. So yeah, it's just the wait now to hopefully stop grieving as hard because <laughs> I'm still there and I think it's because I'm on the drugs I think once I stop the drugs I'll be good right and um how often did you slow down since the last time I seen you or like what's your I did to? actually I did but that's because I started another thing like another drug what's that drug crack that's the only reason oh. you know but I slowed down a lot and it's not like I I crave, like I want the crack all the time. It just helps me when I'm withdrawing, so I don't go and run off and get more. Right. So, how did you start that? Uh, a friend, that a friend did. He gave it to me. He said, "I'll help you," and it did. Sure as shit. Now, how often are you using a crack substance? Maybe twice a day. Right. Yeah, only twice a day, something like that. How do you think your life would be if you wasn't introduced to drugs? I'd probably still have my kids. Probably have my family still. Probably have everything still. As far as like a career? Oh, I'd probably be a funeral director right now. Funeral director, that's a uh, very, you know, Morbid financial. Job, and it's good for money. Consistent, yeah. Yep, it's something you'll never run out of. <laughs> that's for sure. That's smart. When, yeah. did, when were you like thinking about this career? Uh, since I was like, 17. Since you were 17? Uh, since I had a, I had a stillborn baby when I was 17. Oh my God. And they made him look not 
Okay. Like, he didn't look real. He looked like a doll, almost. And that really bothered me. I think you can make a person look, like, better for their last, like, time of being seen. Right. And that kind of got me the motivation to start looking at being a funeral director. I think I have, like, two years left of school. I got a four. Mm. Yeah. You, you feel like you'd be able to, you know, dress the deceased up better than, you know, how And then borrow the all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll be able to help a lot of people. And my plan is to open a funeral home and pay for people that overdose, pay for all their funerals. That's so sweet of you. Yeah, be able to do that because it makes a big impact on somebody's life. Like it's a big financial burden, unfortunately. I'm saying it's a burden because it happens so suddenly and it breaks a lot of people, breaks a lot of people's pockets and it's something that's not cheap. Death shouldn't be something that has to be paid for. <laughs> like you shouldn't have to pay for somebody's funeral. It should be something that's free given to a family. That's something that should be definitely free. Right. But everything costs money, you know? <laughs> yeah, just for my kid, my baby, just to go into a rental casket, it cost $700. Mm. That was insane. Well, do you have a lot of friends out here? You can I, I have a lot, but they're all homeless. Do you trust them? No. No, I don't trust my friends as far as I can throw them. Because they do drugs. And uh, a lot of them steal from me, and I'm somebody that even if you fuck me over, I'm still gonna be there for you in the end. Like, who I am. I can't leave anybody alone. Nobody deserves to be alone. How do you feel when you look in the mirror? Or I don't look in the mirror. I just don't. Unless I do my makeup, then yeah. Then I feel nice, but no, besides that, I don't look in the mirror. And why is that? Because I hate who I became. I hate it a lot. <laughs> but hey, hopefully after this new year, I'll feel better. <laughs> Do you think if you were to like leave Kensington, you know, get far, far away and uh, be around sober people, you'll be able to get clean? Like it'll be Possibly. better for you or, or at least go to rehab and, you know. Possibly, find yeah. Addiction. Possibly. So, uh, when do you plan on making that step? Uh, sometime before January 1st. Before January 1st? Yeah, they're already looking for a bed for me at Prevention Point. Okay. So, they're searching for a bed right now. Let's hope they get one. I hope it's not before Christmas. Because <laughs> I do want to see my kids. But how, how often do you stay in touch with them? Are you able to, like, you know, are they able to reach out to you? or? You... Whenever I get on the phone. So. So, you call up there, or? Yeah. Yeah. Often. I try to. I try to these call once a week so they know I'm okay. Right. And you're hoping that one call they say, you know, we got the bed ready for you. Right? Yeah. That would be okay. <laughs> that would be awesome at this point. It's cold out here. It's freezing. You said somebody reached out to you for Christmas? A family member? My sister did. Your sister? Actually. Yeah. My little sister did. And what she said? She told me I can come home for Christmas. My grandparents said I could come home. So, let's hope it, hope it goes good. <laughs> okay, okay. There was a reason you couldn't come home at first or something? Because of the drugs. Because of the drugs? I was very, very heavy on them. So, and I was using a needle at that point, which I don't anymore. They didn't want to see you at, like that, or is there mm -hmm. anything you did to It's them? kind of like my choice. Uh, I don't want my kids to see me fall apart in front of them. It's right. the best thing for them stay away from now. Yep. I hope once you see them Bray, you hug them so tight that they head pop off. Yep, I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> right. Put yourself in your kids' shoes. Um, you yeah. Know, what would you look forward to when, for Christmas, you know? Yeah. I will. Yeah. I know. They need me. That's what they need. I didn't have my mom when I was younger, so at least need to be there for them at some point. Need to. Whether it's now or later, I still need to be there. I'm there even, I'm there very actively still in his life, like son, my son's life, like, mm -hmm. by phone calls and all that stuff. But that, that's not enough, I don't think. Now, Bree, for the people who don't know Kensington, can you uh, just give them a few words, tell them, like, what it's like, like out here? Like, what's life like out here? It's rough, it's scary, it's hard, and 
once you come here, you know how hard life can be because you see what people can go through. People go through everything here from being raped, murdered. There's almost every street has lost somebody to a bullet. Mm. Like, it's not the life to live out here, and I recommend not to come here if you're going to be homeless. Right. Don't do it. Go rehab. Do something. Because you're really going to learn what life is when you come here. The people are awesome here. A lot of them, like, they are. They're fucking awesome. But this is, like, hard life. It's hard life out here. Even for the people who live here that aren't homeless. It's rough out here. Just be careful if you do come. Be safe. What's the, what's the percentage of people you see making it up out of here? As far as addiction? Addicts? Maybe, like, 2%. 2%? Most people die here. Bree, I see you changed the hair color on her. Yeah, it's blue and fucking, and I have no idea what other color. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a mess right now. I ran out of hair dye. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what you're into. You like changing your hair color. Sometimes, yeah, when I'm feeling like spontaneous, when I can get my hands on hair dye. <laughs> what type of emotions do you go through out here? Is there like any type of happiness at all? Not really. No, unfortunately not. It's a little rough to be happy out here. It's starting to get harder and harder just as the like, cold comes. The cold's making it really rough. I have plenty of nights where I just sit under a blanket and cry if I have a blanket because it's cold. It's fucking cold. Like to the core. The only time I warm up is if I go into a store for two minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, Bray, I'm gonna bring you some blankets out here. I don't know where, where do you sleep? You sleep here? Yeah. Oh man, it's rough. Yeah. It's rough. Yep. Where do you see your life going at this point? You know? Uh, hopefully rehab. That's it. That's the last part I want to the story out here is rehab. You gonna make it, Bray. Yeah. <laughs> Bray, I'd like to thank you for your time. You've been a wonderful interviewee for me. All thank time you. media be praying for you. Thank you. Hopefully next time, I won't be here for you guys to interview me. So, but if so, maybe if I am here, you guys, I have some, like, progress. Right. Thank you, Bree. ATM Fox out. Thank you. Join All Time Media's Patreon for exclusive content and behind-the-scenes content and face-to-face -face live video chat. Thank you, guys. The link is in the description below.